It's the Logan Power Show Inspirational and motivational It's the Logan Power Show Informational to help you grow Logan, Logan, Logan Logan Power Show and now the host, Calvin Logan. Hey everybody, welcome to the Logan Power Show. It's me, your host, Calvin Logan. I thank you all for watching another broadcast of the Logan Power Show. As we're here to empower, we're here not to empower, we're also here to inspire. Not to inspire, we're also here to give you the truth. Well, I got with me a coach. He preaches the truth on the court. Um, he is a coach that has a man of humble beginnings. Um, he's doing some things that... People are need to be talking about how he's making a difference, not on the low country, but making an impo- impact in the state of South Carolina and across the nation. Uh, he is the head coach for the varsity team for the Timberland High School Wolves girls varsity team. He's the one and only Mr. Allen Gathers Jr. What's going on, coach? How's everything? Good, good. How you doing? Doing good. Glad to have you here. Yes, sir. I'm glad to be here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, Coach, um, you are currently in a you 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 in the dance. You in the playoffs. You guys are going on to the you know to had a a, a really incredible run. Uh, you have really have inspired so many. Uh, you're on round number two of this huge playoff run. Now, tell us how did you get started? Because you know, coaching is not an easy task. That people make it sound you, know, you make it look easy now. You make it look easy, but tell us how did you get started in your humble beginnings? Um. Growing up playing sports, starting off in rec league, just falling in love with it um, and had a very big inspiration from my high school coach, Coach Stewart, Jerome Stewart, which he's been at Timberland since Timberland has been open. He's the head boys coach and I uh, went off to South Carolina State and uh, first I, I majored in business and then um, then I was like, uh, I want to do something different. So I changed over to to the phys ed department and, and started getting into more of the coaching. I would come back home and help coach Stewart out on the weekends um, with the boys team. And so luckily that um, when I graduated from South Carolina State, I was offered a job to be one of his, one of his assistants from two, in 2011. Um, so that's what, how I started out on my coaching career there. And I took over the girls program in 2016. So up until now, and this has been a blessing. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Um, you, uh, we say like you know, I'm a I'm a girl. Uh, I'm a girl dad, so you know, um, I'm all for it. I'm a boy dad also, so you know, for me, it's inspiring to see uh, young, vibrant coaches that want to inspire young ladies to think more. Just as on the court, but it's off the court as well. Uh, you have a huge backing. Um, the the city of Saint Stephen's. South Carolina is pulling for y'all to, to make history. Uh, getting to the state championship is one thing, but also making a difference, letting people know there are some people that have the faith to overcome adversity. Uh, as you know, varsity basketball is not an easy task, and you guys weren't considered to be, quote, unquote, the ones – on top of the mountaintop when it first got started, the program started almost close to six years when you took over and you have developed year after year, uh, finding the right chemistry, uh, the right cohesiveness is going to make you guys a strong out or a strong bring home the trophy. Uh, can you tell us what some of the things that you, I guess, when you think about developing players, what are some things, I guess, that coach need to be the be have the look out for the eye, the keen eye to see when it's on the court. And a lot of times we think it's like a video game. I can create a player and they're going to be this phenomenal, but coaching is not as easy as people may seem. So is there like a, a scheme or some type of uh, equation that you come up with when trying to develop players into uh, top level recruits? Well, for, it all starts in the off season. Um, off season, that's when you get really develop your game and really can prosper at your game. Um, and it also starts with who you have behind you as well. 
go back to your assistant coaches. I have a wonderful coaching staff um, that I know they, they put in more a lot of time. More time. We, we I know we're away from our families, but those, those assistant coaches, I got to give a shout out to my assistants, um, Coach Green, Coach Marshall, and Coach Source. Those guys really are behind me 100%. Um, being at Timberland, I have to coach multiple sports. So I'm also, I also coach football as well. So some of that time in the off season, I'm coaching football, but I got those guys to be able to be there to coach, to help develop our girls. So like I told our parents, um, ending of our last season, I said for us to be where we need to be, we have to start in the off season. We have to be bought in. We have to, um, Everybody got to sacrifice. And with, and with coming in and being developed, being able to be developed, you have to sacrifice. Some people got to make those sacrifices. I know um, we have a few girls that be in the gym sometimes 7 o'clock in the morning. After practice, they go on to do another workout, but they love to be in the gym. Yes. Got it. Now, you, you also teach student athletes. They are a student athlete. Your girls have a very success rate of in the classroom. I'm um, also on the court. We, uh, I've done some, done some research. You, you know, you girls are very successful. No probationary issues. Uh, very much you are locked in on their education and saying like, okay, you're going to be a student athlete, but you're going to love this game, but you're going to love these books. How are, you get, how are you able to get the buy-in? And the reason why I'm asking that is because you already know um, there are coaches that can be very successful on the court but be a failure in the classroom. How are you able to keep both of those things on the same page that the, that the students don't lose focus on the major goal? And then, uh, well, first of all, it starts again with the head. And I have to um, pray homage to our principal, Mr. Tim Evans, our athletic director, Ms. Reed. And what, that's one thing as an athletic director that she's instilling her coaches that we have to realize that these kids are student athletes first. And we want to... Um, be one of the best. So one thing that we have done during each each season, like fall, winter sports, spring sports, we have always had a little competition that we started over a year ago about which which sport is going to have the highest GPA. So, you know, sometimes it, it, it fluctuates because, you know, in the fall, football got all these kids. But you, it's just the fun of it, and, and you will see that the kids work hard at it just to make sure that they're great. You know, you're going to still have those ones that try to slip hand there, but you got to bring them back. And uh, But that's one thing we are big on is just making sure that these kids are getting what the proper teaching and the proper learning of what they need in the classroom. And now that will carry over to them being successful and on the court. Absolutely. Now, one thing I, I like about, about you, you, you praise the wins. And you praise the tough losses. You don't you don't try to disgrace and say, you know, you put your you don't put your emotional on your sleeves. You always proud of your ladies and how they keep fighting for you. And they they fight for you on social media, coach. I mean, you got to <laughs> your parents be sharing the stuff like it like it's a flood, like you ready to teach the truth. Uh, what how are you able to get that kind of buy in? Because not only got your girls buying in the parents. Believe in the vision that you've instilled in that culture in St. Stephen's. Where does that come from? Because not everybody and not every coach can say, I got a parent buy-in plus a student buy-in the same exact time. Well, and that comes with the girls, man. I'll be honest with you. For them to have the fans and the parents just to buy in to what we are trying to do is by what they're showing on the court of, the, of their hard effort. I say, if you give effort every night, people are going to be want to see you. If you do what you're supposed to do and you just continue to play together, one thing that we have bought into that 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 we started off this year, we started saying family, and then we then we took that over to sisterhood. Um, as we got into region and as we got into playoffs, and I really think the community are really realizing of how much of a sisterhood that these girls are really are. Um, we had the opportunity just on Sunday to take these girls to the USC and Tennessee game to be able to enjoy just a team bonding. And the more they be around each other, the more team bonding, the more the community going to see that. And that's what makes the parents and the fans buy in to what the girls 
are doing. Yes, sir. Now you teach defense. Now you're not just an offensive coach. You're not just Mister Mister. I'm gonna I'm gonna beat you. Golden State Warriors beat you 140 to 136. You're teaching defense. defense yes, sir. Is sort of, is sort of your um uh your actual your focus. That's your chip on your shoulder. Yes, sir. How are you able to keep the defense of mindset focused in in a region to where lights out shooting is how as how they go? They try to take you out the building, but you're teaching strategic defense, uh, especially when the game gets close. Um, where does that come from? Because a lot of coaches you see now is just that you know, hey, I'm, I got girls pulling, I got girls and guys shooting analytics. I'm gonna shoot sixty shots, sixty three pointers. If I get 20, you know, and they get, you know, 10, it's more analytics, but you're teaching defense of mindset. I'm going to stop you at your best game and give you my best. Where does that come from? It comes from um, just knowing that defense wins championships. I mean, and defense win games at the end of the day. Um, I Any sport that you're in, and one thing that I try to tell the ladies is as much as as you can spend on offense, that's as much you need to spend on defense because you want to get the ball so you can be able to score. You want to get the ball till you till you can be able to shoot that three pointer. So that's one thing we have, and I, I we have our defensive coordinator, which is um, Coach Green, wonderful guy. We always coming up with a good scheme on what we are trying to do defensively, and we and what what what's so special about these young lady is that we can play a little bit of everything to where we can be successful. So that that is a great thing. And like I said, some nights it shows. You can tell. But like I tell them, for us, you have to bring it every night. You have to bring it every night. So like I said, defense is one of those key factors into being successful. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Well, you know, for me, I've been just following you, Coach, on social media. I see the wins. Um, I, I, see, I see what you share, your motivation. And you know me, I'm, just, I'm always encouraged by things I see on social media. I always want to bring light to the tunnel. Um, it's the first time us seeing each other uh, from, from a social media side, like seeing face-to-face. But I just want to encourage the Wolves, encourage those ladies, hey, um, you got somebody who's, who got, who's in faith with you. Um, you always hear about the school that nobody heard of, heard of, but now that school is getting attention. And um, I just want to give a shout out to congratulate you all on one heck of a season. That's still un- the story has not been un- t- finished yet, and you still got more to do. Uh, so, so coach, people are predict- are projecting you all getting on through making a deep run, and I know that. In the back of your mind, you got some more things you, you, you want to bring home, bring home, bring home the ring, bring up something that's never been done in that in that side of town um, to bring some more light to a city that has so much potential. Um, you mentioned taking your your girls to see the USC uh, Gamecock. Shout out to Coach Don Staley and what they are doing. Phenomenal ladies. Um, they're doing some great things at the University of South Carolina. And, uh, you know, projections that they will be in the Final Four, probably the national championship, probably putting one up in the banners again. Uh, where do you see some of your girls going? Because some of these numbers, I'm seeing some of the girls put up. Um, some of those are the actual divisional one numbers. And you have some girls putting up some serious numbers, some serious information. Where do you see some of your girls going as this, as this years evolve and how some of your ladies are developing? Well, the good thing about it is we have no seniors on this team right here. So we have um, pretty much everybody coming back. Um, but we have um, Amaya Ferguson. She's a junior right here from um, St. Stephen's section called 41, um, South Carolina. She's had verbally committed to Temple. Um, so um, – and we have – and I have another junior, Michaela Watkins, um, she she's has been getting some look um, some looks also Amani Johnson and um, Dasani Kinlaw also um, we have um, Zion Prello and Kennedy Ravenel and um, Michaela Hampton 
So those are the ones that um pretty much are our, our varsity girls. And like I said, Miss Amaya Ferguson, she has verbally committed to Temple. Absolutely. Well, that's a congratulations. Kudos to her. Uh, Temple University, not a bad program at all. Um, you know, there's a lot of great players have come through Temple. And I believe that, you know, uh, she can make a difference uh, up up north and uh, have send you some tickets, Coach, so you can come see her, come see her <laughs> in style. That's what you got to see. Coach got to make sure he see the final product. Like, you know, it, it, did it work? Did, did, did my, did it, did it hit home? Mm-hmm. Um, final thought, coach. I'm not saying, you, you know, when it's all said and done for yourself, I want to project 25, 30 years down the road. Uh, what do you want people to say about you? What do you want, I guess, the legacy of coach gathers at the end of the day to say, when people look at you, what you've done, how many girls you've developed to become successful, not just ladies in college, but ladies in general, become great women. What do you want at the end of the day people say about you when it's all said and done? Well, I did mention something. I want to go back. I, I left off one of my girls, China Green. I miss and left her off. But Got it. What, what I want people to say about me is, is don't, don't judge me by how much wins I got, how much losses I have. Judge me by the impact that I, that I made on these young ladies. Um, I have – Girls that have done graduated since I took over in 2016 that I still have a great relationship with. And that's my thing. If I'm if I can help them be it, it goes further than basketball. Like I tell them, once you're a part of me, you 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 are my daughter. Um, I took old, I wanted this position because I was having a daughter at the time. My daughter is six years old and she loves to be around these girls. So that's. That's what I want. It's, it's, it's bigger than basketball for me. And that's what I want people to realize, that I love them wholeheartedly, like they're my own. Absolutely. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't got a chance to see, the, to see, the, see them play, again, uh, the Timberwolves, Timberland High School Wolves, understand this, the ladies, again, uh, they'll be traveling. Again, this is Wednesday, February 23rd. Quarterfinals playoff tip off. Tip off is 6:30 p.m. They travel to, to Andrews, South Carolina. They they have a big battle. Am I correct? Andrew Jackson. Andrew Jackson. Andrew Jackson. This is in Kershaw. This is in Kershaw, South Carolina. Six nine two five Kershaw Camden Highway, Kershaw, South Carolina two nine zero six seven. Tip off time is 6:30 p.m. Uh, we claiming that they're gonna move on and keep it moving. They have a long ways to go. Uh, coaches pretty much has uh, some great players. Again, that he mentioned that they are making a lot of a lot of noise. Uh, again, uh, from the last game of Maya Ferguson, twenty eight points, uh, putting it down, along with Michaela Walkers with a double double, and then uh, Miss China Green added six, and that was a win of a 50, 52 thirty seven. Uh, against Wade Hampton, uh, so definitely uh, these ladies, ain't, these ladies ain't no joke. Now, listen, <laughs> when you come to St. Stephen, South Carolina, you better have your game up and ready to go. So, Coach, we want to give you a, a kudos, salute. We give you your mm-hmm. flowers now. Tell the ladies, hey, there's a there's a there's a person named by Calvin Logan, the Logan Power Show, has been following, and I say nationwide, worldwide, and like I say again. All we want to do, if you put one up in the rafters, hey, let me know. We said it here first. Change is happening in St. Stephen's, South Carolina, and it goes with you, Coach. So kudos to you. Kudos to everyone who's watching. Hey, keep the faith. Trust God. He's going to make a difference. To God be the glory. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The Logan Power Show Inspirational And motivational It's the Logan Power Show Informational To help you grow Logan, Logan, Logan Logan
Logan Power Show.